Hello, dear leaders. Glad to meet you again on this week's podcast. Well, I can guess what's going on through your mind right now. Just cut to the chase and talk about the F word, correct? Uh, I totally get it. Uh, also, if you're thinking I just clickbaited you by throwing in a title like that uh, and probably going to end up saying the F stands for faith or Father God, you're wrong. I am going to talk about the F word itself for your kind information. Surprised? Shocked? Anxious? Hang on, we'll talk on the other side. Profanity. How can we describe a profanity? I did a Google search and it said something spot on. Blasphemous and obscene language. Google can sometimes be very wise, isn't it? Uh, a decade or two ago, profanity was considered uncivil and uh, those that used swear words were looked down on as classless. Thanks to Hollywood movies that uh, hail profanity as trendy and have successfully normalized it. Remember the movie Wolf of Wall Street? Uh, the movie with the highest number of F-bombs ever, it won the Academy Award for Best Picture. The movie portrayed profanity as a common practice in Wall Street corporates, and uh, hence it was okay to overdo it in the movie. But at the same time, if you watch the movie Pursuit of Happiness, it had a very similar stocks and brokers workplace setting but yet did not show the employees or the management being obscene or profane. Anyway, uh, we now have a generation who not only believes profanity is uh, okay, but uh, also uses them casually without any guilt or regret. I was born and raised in India in a very orthodox culture. Uh, forget profanity. Uh, we were expected to even use normal words carefully. At school, we did once in a while go beyond our limits and uh, if by chance I spurted out uh, an, an unacceptable word uh, within the confines of the family, I was reprimanded and strongly warned against uh, such behavior. Now, I'm talking about the 90s, uh, but uh, look at the scenario now. We have somehow adopted a casual attitude towards words and looks like profanity is not as bad as it used to sound back then. Well, why is profanity a big deal? It is usually justified as an emotion expressed when something unexpected happens uh, like surprises, shocks, etc. Can we step back and see why words are a big deal First of all, what does the Bible teach us about words and the implications of their usage? There is a very strange story in the Old Testament about a judge named Jephthah who was mad at a particular sect of people called the Ephraimites who kept provoking him. He got so wild that he wanted to rout the men all together. You can read the story in Judges 11 and 12. He interestingly used a very smart idea to identify whom to kill. Uh, I'm sure all of you are aware of how each language has different dialects. And apparently the Ephraimites couldn't pronounce the sh sound. Uh, for example, they would say sugar uh, as sugar uh, or shu as su and so on and so forth. Jephthah stood at the city gate and uh, any time a person walked across, his men would ask that person to repeat the word Shibboleth. The Ephraimites sadly could only pronounce it as Sibboleth without the Sh. And whenever anyone said the word like that, the men would take them aside and finish that person off. 
Judges 12, 6 records that 42,000 Ephraimites lost their lives just because they could, couldn't pronounce a word. When I read this, I was amused but very disappointed at the same time because so many lost their lives only because of the words that came out of their mouths. There could have been uh, one non-Ephraimite who always mocked the Ephraimite's accent and over time picked up their dialect. Uh, this person, when asked to repeat Shibolit by Jephthah's men, could have mockingly mimicked the Ephraimites by saying Sibolit, uh, thinking it was funny. It did not end uh, funny after all for that person, as you'd have guessed. So at that moment, it did not matter whether you are an Ephraimite or not. All that mattered was the words that came out. James 3, 4 onwards, take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. I'm sure all of us agree and can relate to what the Bible says about words. If you have been observing the trend of mankind, uh, the more sophisticated and advanced we get, uh, the more we have gone down in terms of nobleness, morals and discipline. It is so evident in our words and behavior. We are no longer required to dress up modestly and revealing clothes have become acceptable. Profanity and cursing have slowly become the norm of life. I wouldn't be surprised uh, that the world leaders like presidents and prime ministers would start using the F word sometime in the future because we have already legalized and justified so many awkward things. It would be a sad story when churches, pastors and worship leaders start justifying swearing and start using it on pulpits. As cringe as it sounds, I'm sorry, it may very well be a reality soon. Romans 1, 28-30 Furthermore, just as they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, so God gave them over to a depraved mind. So they do what ought not to be done. They have become filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, greed, and depravity. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, and malice. They are gossipers, slanderers, God-haters, insolent, arrogant, and boastful. They invent ways of doing evil. They disobey their parents. They have no understanding, no fidelity, no love, no mercy. Although they know God's righteous degree that uh, those who do such things deserve death, they not only continue to do these very things, but also approve of those who practice them. So the question is, how should we, people of faith, respond to the guiles of this world? I have mentioned it many times before and will shamelessly mention it many times again, that our genuineness is what attracts God. While our Christian traditions, superficial acts, etc. can qualify us as religious, at the very end of it, what counts is 
what we are inside and what our attitude is. James 126, if anyone thinks he is religious and does not brittle his tongue, but deceives his heart, this person's religion is worthless. Remember, the words we speak reveal who we are deep down. Matthew 15, 18 says, but what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart and this defiles a person. So the call is, while your colleagues might throw the F-bombs casually, your friends in school or university consider it a trend, while the world believes it is okay to not be careful with words, we as people of faith should watch out for what we speak. It may just be a word, or in the case of the Ephraimites, just a letter, but it cost their very lives. I would like to end with these wise words from Jesus himself. Luke 6.45 The good person out of the good treasure of his heart produces good, and the evil person out of his evil treasure produces evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. Strive hard to have an unblemished inner self and your mouth will follow soon. Until I meet you again next week, this is John signing off. God bless you.